welcome everybody to our first ever member talk from Investor Community that we are making external so everybody can feel the love, can feel the tribe that we have within the Investor Community where we are a global community of women entrepreneurs from around the world supporting each other as we get ready for funding. So we are really focused on female founders, on and on getting ready for funding. And today we are absolutely thrilled to have our very first webinar where we showcase our members and the partners of our members to share their key knowledge with you. And what better way to start off this series than talking about what we're talking about. Look at us now, we are all here on Zoom. We are on a webinar. And today, given what's happened with COVID, I, if you're like me, we are living on either Zoom or go, go to meeting or um, pop in or Google Meets, all of them. And so it's so important for us to put our best foot forward when we are speaking online in no matter what context. And this talk today came out of a conversation that we had in our member chats, our weekly chats within our member membership where one of our members, you know, had talked about some frustrations with her experience using tech. And so we said, okay, let's come up with this. And so Marie said, let's build this, let's do something. And Susan said, yeah, let's do this. So we're gonna get going today. So I'd really like to formally welcome our three speakers today. So we have Dr. Susan Taffer from the United States and she is many things, Susan, um, among others. I think today the label I'm gonna go with is a leadership expert. You have so many wonderful hats. So today we're going to say a leadership expert because you're going to share some of your Susanisms, guys. This is what I call them from Susan. Um, <laughs> we also have Marie Boone Clark, who is also a very seasoned executive. And today the hat I'm giving you and we're sharing is like your business development hat, Marie. Again, you are also an entrepreneur. So both Marie and Susan are entrepreneurs and members of Investor Community. And today they're sharing one aspect of their hats if you will, because like most women, we have several hats. And last but not least, I would love to welcome Mo Sakurta, who is our resident videographer, professional film director. So if you want to know how to do this the right way, she's your lady. Okay, so I want us to get started. And to begin with, just to let you know, you're going to go away at the end of this webinar. You're going to go away with so much more knowledge about the things to think about when you are projecting yourself who do you need to be thinking about with regard to your audience how do you need to position yourself depending on the type of online event that it is what are the kinds of client testimonials and client stories that you want people to be having and so you're going to be hearing on that and of course practical tips to say how do we wade through all these different types of that types of technology. How do we get the sound right, the video right? How do we position ourselves correctly? And Mo is going to give us a lot of incredible tips. So now I'd love to start off with Susan. So very, very great to start with you. Um, Mo, would you like to share this, your slides? Or I don't know if Susan, if it's easier for you to share them directly so that we, off we go. There we are. There we are. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Anne. It's such a pleasure to be here with you. I'm always excited about everything that you have to offer your group because uh, we're an incredible diverse group, as you can tell. And um, we reach everywhere, the United States, all over the world. And um, what's exciting is this presentation is applicable to everyone who has to be on Zoom. And that means either every day or you know, special events. So we're going to just give you some key tips on how to set the stage. And my introduction, as Mo and Marie will follow up with some really awesome how-tos, is just to speak to the value. And the value is incredibly important because we all want value, no matter what we're doing. So setting the stage is key. So Mo, if you'll just roll that over so our audience can see. And it really doesn't matter um, what your purpose or what your visual presentation length is, uh, setting the stage from a technological standpoint is really key. You want to have a successful discussion, a successful presentation, and you wanna foster that success. So the first 15 minutes can be crucial and capturing your audience's attention is 
absolutely fundamental and in a good way, because just imagine you go to a concert, everyone loves concerts or almost everyone I know loves a concert. So you're sitting there and you're waiting, probably you've got a good ticket, maybe third, fourth row. And you're waiting for this exciting presentation by your best band or your best singer. And while you've been there for about 45 minutes, you've been anticipating and they walk onto the stage and all of a sudden the mic doesn't work. It starts screeching and they have all these technological issues going on. What happens in your mind? The experience is just frustrating. You've probably paid a hundred dollars or more, um, maybe even a hundred euros, which is a lot more. And you just are like, what is going on? You've already had this really bad taste in your mouth. So this is something we want you to, to um, see the value of how not to have that happen to you when you're doing an important presentation. And so we're just gonna talk to you about how that can <clears throat> be set up and you can mitigate those problems. So go ahead and roll over for me, Mo. Next slide. There it is. So we're not talking about perfection. Perfection is not the key, but it is about being intentional. Now you can't control everything that goes on in your house. I have a dog that barks whenever I get on the camera, it seems, and he has a lot of noise in the background. And so I try to mitigate that. But what's important is your content, while it is very important, so are the details of your delivery. And that's what we're gonna share with you today. You wanna keep your audience engaged, with as few distractions as possible. And one of the uh, things you'll note is, you know, where's the camera? How do I talk in the camera? And how do I read what I'm gonna say? That's probably one of the toughest, but we're gonna learn how to do some of that. You want your audience to experience your message. So when they experience it, they're gonna engage more deeply. And how that happens is you value how you present yourself. So your audience understands that you also value what they are expecting. Remember that your audience is always thinking, what is in it for me? We call it with them. And, you know, they're there and their time equates to money, equates to a big value. So spend the time wisely and um, make it count. Next slide. And one of the ways you can do that is to establish your own style. And there are are some suggestions here that I hope you look at. We will provide this PowerPoint for you at the end of the program. But the key is, while you're very, very passionate about your topic, probably either you're in your presentation style or if you're setting up an opportunity for an investor, uh, you want to balance what your own personal passion is with what your audience perceives. And so you really need to study your audience. And these are just some key things. They may not be your style, but these are just some things that I keyed out for you. You want to create the urgency, but you don't want to get into the hard selling capture. And you want to lead with ease, not desperation. These are two key points. There are others there, be invitational, personal, and um, polished is good, not slick. So these are just some fun things to think about while we're learning from uh, Marie and Mo, and I believe uh, Marie is going to contribute now some key points for us as well. So thank you. Thanks, Susan. Um, I think it's important first for us to sort of ground ourselves into why this is important. Um, as a founder, you have a myriad of demands um, on your time, your energy, your focus, everything from finance to web design to whatever, right? And so why am I worried about how I look <laughs> on a Zoom call? <laughs> Um, and, and, and I think we should, I, I'm going back to one of my uh, business mentors and, and, and someone I admire hugely, and that's Pauline Brown. Um, but I want to ask you a question first. Why do we have a fascination with brands like Louis Vuitton or Apple? Is it because no one matches their quality? Likely not. Marketing and brand experts contend it's because as consumers, we feel them. It's like these companies and the people who lead them have identified how to decipher what resonates with us, right? They've embedded this knowledge in their brand in all of their strategies, not just one thing. So when I say Apple, you automatically have a mental vision of their products, the logo, the company, good, bad, or indifferent, you feel something. 
the same holds true for say Louis Vuitton, Mercedes Benz, Vespa, <laughs> you likely get my point. So why is it relevant for this discussion? Because as the founder of your organization, you're setting the aesthetic strategy for your company. In some instances, many might actually see you as the brand. Um, next slide. As a friend and financial whiz is off to say, stakeholders invest and advocate for your organization based on how you make them feel. We have to remember that people, not machines, buy the vast majority of products, services, and people, not machines, invest in our companies. And guess what? <laughs> people are emotional. They make decisions based largely on how a product, a service, a company, or even a person makes them feel. The ability to create this feeling about your organization and yourself is called aesthetic intelligence. And it was coined by Pauline Brown. Pauline is a former executive with LVMH. And she defines aesthetic intelligence as it's about eliciting a sense of delight and rousing the imagination through sensory experiences. It's about managing what's seen, heard, and yes, felt about you and your company, your brand. As founders, we are challenged with understanding how aesthetics plays a role in every aspect of our business. I was having a conversation recently with someone in our organization and she said, does it really matter what the card says? And I said, yeah, it does. <laughs> it matters. And the perfect example, to, and I couldn't explain it to her any better than this. I ordered a $25 box of cosmetic wipes from Chanel. If you guys haven't done that experience, you need to do it. It's a $25 box of like the little things you use to remove your makeup, right? It comes packaged in this beautiful box and you take the tissue paper out and then there's a little box with the Chanel logo. And inside you have $25 worth of cosmetics puffs. And so yes, you could go to Target and you're in the US and buy them for $3.99. But there is nothing more luxurious than this little Chanel box. And my comment to my coworker was, this is why it matters. So anyway, um, our perceptions in terms of virtual communications, what perceptions are drawn from settings that you take calls. Are you in an office? Um, are you outside in a gorgeous garden as Anne is so off to do? Um, or perhaps you're propped in bed on a pillow. What message are you conveying to your audience? What do they infer from seemingly innate things like poor camera angle, horrible lighting? Do you have second town props? tech and sound problems? Um, some researchers would contend that 64% of us make passive judgments based purely on aesthetics. Mm -hmm. Thus, the impetus for this conversation. So to share some insights about how to create an aesthetically pleasing virtual interaction is Mohua Dakota. Thank you, Marie. Thank you, Susan, that was awesome. Um, I want to talk a little bit about how to do online events and I'll cover a few different things and towards the end we are also going to talk a little bit about question if you have any questions at the end I'll be happy to answer them because it's though it's only online events have been there for a long time but we have really experienced them in the last year like nothing before so you we, it's still growing it's evolving so I really want to uh, touch on various things it might be a lot of information at one go but I can I have tried to break it through and there are a lot of things you need to learn as you go and I'm learning as I go because it's a pretty new um, area and it's growing really fast and the software is growing very fast as well so I want to talk a little bit about uh, about the current landscape, what's happening and what is the opportunities and challenges that we are experiencing. So Brightco, one of the streaming companies uh, here in the United States, said that they streamed 8.1 billion more videos this year than last year. This is just one streaming company that I'm talking about. So you can only imagine the statistics have grown like never before. And video is growing um, like at really a very fast pace. So how do you keep up with all of that? And part of the growth is not just produced videos, it's 
uh, virtual events like this, what we are doing just right now. This has added a lot uh, to the, uh, the video production abilities that is happening all over the world. So virtual events have really grown. There are multiple different kinds that are happening. So we'll talk a little bit about the different kinds as I go through the presentation. And also, one of the things I have realized that has happened, events like this has helped to drive the sales and the marketing uh, verticals all over the world. We have also realized that virtual events has, uh, you know, a lot of the times free to attend. It's very easy to attend. It's very easy to connect and also reach a bigger audience, uh, which is much more cheaper in a lot of different ways. And um, but having said that, it also the production has grown so much that it also comes with new challenges that I will talk uh, about. We have realized that we started with Zoom meetings in March last year, and now we are doing uh, streaming, streaming Oscar events. So when we are doing things like that, our challenges has actually grown over uh, in last one year. So people's expectations have grown with your uh, with online events. The way you appear has become very important. You have to almost treat a virtual event like an in-person meeting now. It's no longer like, okay, let me take that meeting wherever I am. And so you really have to think through. So I want to I am Motokurta, my company is Aramba, and I do video production and live streaming for small businesses and nonprofits and a lot of women led businesses here in the United States. We offer digital content for marketing and web and for live streaming purposes and for digital content for web and social media. So I want to talk today about how can you reach uh, your customers and your uh, clients and create more leads through virtual uh, a virtual con a virtual content content and virtual events. So let's go to the next slide. Location one of the most important aspects before you jump in is to look at that room that you're choosing where you're going to do your meeting from. So you have to choose a room that is quiet and you will not get interrupted during that period of time. As a space, take a space which is very simple background, no clutter, because what happens when we look at a screen, we, we are always, we are not just looking at you, but we are looking at everything around you. And as human beings, we judge you. So <laughs> we want to make sure, <laughs> we want to make sure. Okay, so I want you to use me here as your example because guys, okay, my background is cluttered, it is. So Mo, how can I make this even more impactful and what should I remove? Because this is truly what I have because I wanna show my universe that I am passionate about women, women entrepreneurs, diversity and so on. And it's true when you look on it, what's your professional opinion of how I can do things better? Let's use me here. <laughs> I can, so, so and that is great I love you know the aspect but we can use less of it mm -hmm. so I think you know we can definitely take one or two of those your favorite pieces and we can keep it there so I think just using less and also I will talk about lighting in a minute and maybe something that we can add to your background um, also how your screen is divided like on the left hand of the screen that we see global investor and on the right hand side we see the books mm -hmm. so it's pretty equally divided but in the right in the middle behind you i see a lot of a um, lot of books so that kind of is taking my attention from the left of the screen to the right of the screen with multiple different ways i'm like okay i am reading this i'm reading that i'm reading this. so that's a lot of information towards mm -hmm. me um so definitely i would take what is most important to you, global investor, and then couple of books, yes. So, so um, being practical, we would, I'm not going to do it live here, obviously, but I would remove some of these, would I remove this, like, would it be better just to have the globe, it's the symbol of us being global, like practical tips like that, I have, let's get funded, because it's important, that's what we are, but you can't really see it up there, can you? So, and it's words as well. So what would you, how can I make that better, Mo? So I would remove all the books right behind your, not yeah. right there, not behind your head, if, if behind, right behind your, yes, yeah. that okay. whole, and maybe bring it down, uh, uh, you know, fu uh, fund it, so I can't read that very well, yeah. the one on the top, yeah, bring it that behind you, maybe get funded, let's get funded. 
So where would that be though? If we instead of the globe, where the globe is right now. Okay. Right. Look that now, guys. You see already. How's that? Yeah. Okay. So that's and then even I will reduce the number of books behind you and um right behind you all. Yeah, there's a lot it's of all gonna go. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Keep it as simple as possible. Maybe get a green plant, um, a small one somewhere, and you know, giving people a little bit of uh, rest, <laughs> some place to rest their eyes. Because right now I'm not able to rest my eyes, but love it. Rest your eyes. Perfect. I just yeah. wanted to be um, okay. So Tina said oh, she only sees Mo Moa's presentation. So I want to maybe let's make the screen a little bit bigger. Does that if you can see? that's just with your view mo do you want to guide her as to how tina can make sure she's seeing our faces as well and that what i've been just what we've been looking at okay so tina you can um on the right hand side you should be able to see gallery view speaker view and gallery view do you see that it's also hold on let me see because she's an attendee so sometimes attendees will only see the views that's been there on the webinar that's been set up so uh you might have set it up on um i can't change the view for her because i did not set the meeting yeah but it's, it's so sylvia can see both so i think it's just on how what where yes. it's, it's through event but you say using event right not zoom but it is going through to zoom tina Look at the right hand side on the top, Tina, and you should be able to see the gallery. If you are given multiple view options, there is a speaker view, gallery view, and you should be able to see all the speakers on the gallery view and the speaker uh, and the presentation on another screen. And you can change the screen positions as well. And just to confirm, Mo, um, if she's on a computer, that's where she'd find it, correct? But if you're on a mobile device like an iPad or your iPhone, Tina, then you would actually look, there are three little dots like you'll probably see across the bottom and then there are three little dots. Click those three little dots and that's where you're given the option of changing your view. If not, Mo, turn off, can you turn off the slide share for one sec so she sees my background because otherwise she's missing what we're talking about so that she can okay. get, and I'm going to just make the view into speaker. So I'm speaking, of course. So this is it, Tina. All right. And for anybody who had the same issue. So I've already put this let's get funded we used to be up there. These are the books Mo's telling me I need to get rid of. Right. So and I will be Mo. Thank you very much. I need to put a green plant. Now she can see both. Excellent. Um, and I need to kind of tidy up this bit here. That's it. And I'm sure there's more. Go on, Mar Marie. I would, I would submit that the to your left, the books from Mrs. Obama, et cetera. Um, those are fine, I think. Yes, yeah, I want to keep those. It looks directly looking. behind your head. Yes. yes, because we really can't see them. Yeah. And like technically, Mo would make me change this picture, I know, because you see it, but you don't see it. Um, now, I, I want to discuss the Global Invest Her. I know, Mo, that she's wanting to advertise um, or have that highlight, but is there a way in to just have the top of that showing? The global invest her part but that woman's face um the, the photograph to me is distracting that is just that's busy yeah. um so maybe where you have if you frame your logo yeah um and then drop that down that would be cute because so behind that is another set of shelves right you've done a lot of books and okay so i love it we're doing this live this is how we did it ladies and gentlemen you see, so that yeah. also is a lot of books, and but is that easier on the eye, Mo and ladies? Is that easier than having the ladies face? No, look. I don't think so. I still need to see less books. I feel that it is still <laughs> distracting. It's a lot of different colors, and I know I love books too, sure. but it just becomes too much. Too I, much. Yeah, too much. Like I'm looking at, uh, you know, Michelle Obama and everybody on the right hand side. Then I have red color here and it's lots going on. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be the question. Um, and yeah. It might be a, no, what do you think, Marie? Do you think we can ca come up with a smaller, um, a smaller, uh, you know, way to present global uh, the logo and the global investor instead of a yeah 
Yeah. I, I would take that upper part, the, the logo, yes. frame it. Yes. And then right. that second shelf where you have the red books and that sort of thing, that's where I put the frame. So, so just in front right. of the books, just in front of the books. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then in that top shelf, if you resize those books by color and size, rearrange them by color and size, that'll be more pleasing. I know you guys will never invite me to your house. No, no, this is <laughs> But it's, it's, those are things that, yeah, that you think about when you're, when you're setting up a commercial or whatever in, in my past life. But um, because you want it to look lived in and obviously it's a functioning office. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So if the frame is on the second shelf with your global investor, my eye's going to catch that, go up to your face and then it comes over to let's get funded. So I want to make sure I've understood. So I would move this kind of here, but cut like we cut it and frame it here. So there's nothing else behind it. Here, right, absolutely. Here we take everything out. So it's just clean. There's nothing there. It's because my head is here and this is not distracting you. Yeah, so then we have a nice flow. Okay, what about right. the gadgets and stuff at the top? We don't see them. So I no do a little bit, but take it out. I would just keep it, yeah, keep, or, yeah. Or what would you do with the feminist pillow? Where would you put the feminist oh, pillow? Oh, I love that. I do too. I, I, I think right here, <laughs> Global Investor would be great on the next shelf all by itself, but like there. <laughs> Highlight it. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I think... And tell me if I'm wrong, Mo, if she moved the books to the top, you would see them and you'd have to do them in color, like yeah. lighter to darker, right? That your eye sees it, you it recognizes it, categorizes it as a book, and then it moves on. Mm -hmm. It's when things are not in order that your brain can't categorize it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And yes, Susan's, Susan's background is very neat. The little interesting Chotsky's, but see how her books are in color. Yeah. The books are that's that's sort of what you want to replicate. And I think the other difference, um, Anne, is with the books by Clinton, Obama et al., is we know what they are. So when I look at them, I see them. Yeah. So sometimes if you want to leave the books for functionality, if you put a book this way so that I can see the cover, my yeah. eye matches it and then I move on. Yes. Okay. Susan, Perfect. is that a virtual background? It, it is, and I did that for a reason. Shall I take it off so you can see why? <laughs> and then you can uh, you can show uh, what does not need to happen, but I keep in background for me, uh, my office wall. <laughs> it's very distracting, but I use it for a couple of different presentations. So not for this type of presentation, of course, but. Um, when I do uh, different kinds of conversations, I point to some of these um, things on the wall that are important. So yeah, very cluttered, very busy. <laughs> I think and you can difference. add some just to light, you know, uh, some good lighting would actually look really, you know, even bring some of those things up. So it was not a bad, you know, yeah, it's not at all bad that you have all those. It looks like, you know, a part of you, it gives, it adds a little bit of personality Definitely. So I think it's a really good idea to have them, but maybe having less of them and adding some lighting, some good lighting would be really a great way to go with it. I good idea. It is that it's further away, that it's not immediately behind her. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The distance. Mm. It's really yeah. hard though to set up a stage for the for the call but then be functioning because <laughs> right now I'm sitting on the edge of my desk. My desk is actually over here, um, but behind my desk is a red sofa that I know Mel hates. <laughs> so I just didn't have it on for you guys. <laughs> so one of the things is you bring up a really good point, Marie, is that, you know, how close you are to the wall for lighting purposes. It's a, actually very important that you give a little a good good amount of distance between the wall and you if you can if your room allows it and you put a light right behind you so that you can kind of differentiate between yourself and the wall um, it makes it more three-dimensional and it makes it more uh, it gives you a nice little depth otherwise it just it looks like you are a part of the wall so uh, that's the problem with one of the problems with two-dimensional images um, and that's how in video production we do it. And even for uh, virtual production, we kind of make sure that we have three point lighting. That is, you have a lighting mm -hmm. on the right in front of you on the key light and main light, 
either you make a window that will be one of your lighting or get some lights to make sure that you have enough good key source of lighting coming to you and some sort of fill light so that your face is evenly lit for uh, most purposes. And I'm so going to share. Yeah, oh, keep sharing because this lighting piece is something I really want your tips on because I actually have professional lights, but I obviously don't have them positioned in the right places. So you can show us how after. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me go to, oops, let's go. To, so this is one of the common, what people have is, if you look at the lighting here, she is kind of little lit with the with computer lights. And then she has no light here and her background is all in dark. Her wall is not lit well, but this is what you most normally see in Zoom a lot of the times. And then if you go to something like this, which she is little more well lit. So what she has done is she has used a window in front of her to um, you know, give her that source of light. She has also put a light right behind her computer to give her um, a source of a key light. And that's what I have done too. I have done a key light right on my face so that my face is a little more evenly lit um, as, because we can't really have a studio kind of a, a feeling inside your bedrooms or inside your office rooms, but we can. what we can definitely do is bring in some lights to give that effect where you look better and you have a much more uh, you know seamless exp better experience also switch on lights in if there are other rooms that are visible like in my house right now what I did is the room behind me I lit up that light we always um, we always want our backgrounds to have some sort of a depth so you want to add some lights like for you and I would add a little bit of a light in one of those um, uh, in the background there between you and the yeah is that better or like how would that it's be little, it's little too hot but maybe if it's on a dimmer we can actually dim it a little bit and it won't be so bright so yeah because i don't i can't it is very bright i can see that i just need to change the bulb it's not a dimmer but that's a really good tip because now it looks and i have professional lights in front of me and i have another one actually to the side but it's not really me, but it is over here maybe i don't know it's a little far away, I feel that way, because I don't see the light on your face on the right hand side. So, um, far. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so it's, it's a good way to look at it is a 45 degree angle mm -hmm. um, for television. That's what we generally do for your key light is at a 45 degree and your fill light is at a 45 degree angle. But in our um, zoom purposes, we actually we cannot have that much if we don't have that much room it's better to bring it right behind the computer um, then you are not going to get a whole lot of um, you know hot spots in your face Other, one of the problems we see always on, notice with zoom is the hot spots that appear a lot of the times also um, it's it's a little trick you have to play with it for a few minutes and see what works the best mm -hmm. and is you know, test it out with multiple uh, angles and see what works the best. And we that's what we did. Marie and I did multiple times on a blog post that we would place like, OK, let's get a, uh, you know, let's get a, a lamp from another room and see how it looks. How mm -hmm. does daylight looks versus orange light, the tungsten light? So everything looks different. So you want to choose daylight because it, daylight bulbs actually make it look a more seamless daylight experience versus the tungsten experience. Hmm. Um, and of course, our makeup and hair is adds a lot of value. I I would say that even if you are doing your regular meetings, just make sure that you know um, do your hair and a little bit of makeup can go a long way and add values to your meetings. It's I think of it as an in-person meeting. So and if you're a big, if you're speaking on a big event, actually go and get professional hair and makeup done. I think it's. Uh, it gives you that confidence it adds value and you appear more successful and it, i think it's a really good way to go if you're going for a bigger um talk or um or having a bigger virtual conference but even every day i would say definitely add some makeup and get your hair done um let's talk a little bit about uh, webcam. So some of the things that people can buy, I feel um, I have we have worked on a lot of virtual conferences and we have realized a lot of the times people don't have really high end computers, high end computers come with embedded good 
uh, cameras, and that's great technology. But if you are unable to afford that, I think it's a great idea to actually get a webcam. And webcams are nowadays are not very expensive. At the very end of the presentation, I do have a um, uh, do have a link to an Amazon webcam which you can buy, and uh, clip it on the top of your computer. Your image will be so much more better than what you are using. And I think all of us are going to be online for a very very long period of time. It's not going to go away. It's a great investment to have. Um, and the same thing I would say for. Uh, same thing, I'm going to talk about audio in a minute and the same thing about audio that I would definitely say, please uh, get an ex external microphone as soon as possible because it adds so much value to your audio because uh, the microphones that is embedded in these are not the in the in the laptop is not the best. Yeah, there Anne has already got a nice little microphone. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because I do podcasts, so sound is super important and we need it to be. So, yeah, it's worth the investment, isn't it, Mo? Because, I mean, you do you do really hear the difference in the audio quality afterwards when you're editing. Ooh, you can really hear the difference. Yes, absolutely. Marie, you have? I was going to ask, so a lot of the webcams come with speakers uh, or uh, microphones, rather, What's your position on that? Are they not good? Do they pick up ambient sound? Let's chat a little bit about that. Yeah, so webcams do come, a lot of them come, uh, come with uh, embedded microphones. If you don't have anything else, it's an okay thing to, it's not a bad, you know, go with it. But if you can afford another separate microphone, I would totally go with a separate microphone. Um, uh, even the USB kind that you find nowadays on, um, on Amazon all the time and they're not very expensive. And again, I do have a link um, uh, to a Blue Yeti microphone, which are great, you know, they, they're hundred dollars, but it's totally worth the money. You just plug it, it's easy to use. You plug it into your computer and you're good to go. So uh, webcam embedded ones are great, but it kind of is similar, you know, webcams are meant to do the camera work. The audio comes as a part of it. So it's not really where they're putting in the money, the technology. So they are putting their money in the camera. And that's where the, uh, the microphone, the way it is created is not good. Um, so you always want to have an external microphone. And the same with when we shoot with video cameras, we always rely on external microphones. We do not use the camera a microphone that is in there. Mm. Um, script placement, you want to play with that. If you're going for a speaking engagement, you definitely want to make sure that you put your scripts right underneath your camera because you want to make that connection to your audience and you want to look directly to the uh, into the computer, uh, into the camera when you're talking. So um, again, please spend some time working on that practice it a few times and again i will go for go with an example marie and i did we did that quite a bit to make sure it's difficult to read and talk at the same time so <laughs> you have to go and get some practice for making sure that you have, you got that script down and um and it takes a while to figure that out there's, a, there's wow. another little tip, Mo, that I got from a different, uh, for, from another expert. I'm just sorry, I'm moving for a second, but look what I have. I have a little post-it with the smiley person, which is my audience, and I have it stuck right behind my camera. So it reminds me, and it's yellow, and the little person is smiling, going, hey, I'm here. <laughs> and so <laughs> it's like to say, that's where I'm looking. I'm not looking down here. I'm looking at you guys there. So I just thought that was a very cool tip and I got from another expert and I said "Ooh, I like that one <laughs> I'm going to remember that's a great tip that's an awesome tip yeah I love that I'll remember that um all right so some of the things I definitely want to talk about the platforms there are lots of different kind of platforms nowadays so and depending on what you're doing uh, in even for a even for a meeting like this where we are using zoom you you know zoom blue jeans Microsoft teams you really if an email comes to me about getting on a meeting I first actually figure see what kind of a 
uh, you know, platform we are using, because even for me, I'm like, okay, I need to download blue jeans. I don't have it, you know, or I need to, uh, my download Microsoft teams. I don't have it. I use zoom all the time. So spend that 15 minutes extra to see, because it's not as easy as, um, I think I get anxiety every time I have to figure out a software last minute and I have to log in. So I always try to make sure that I, my audio and video works before I go in. Um, and, you know, you ha I have hop in Axel events and streaming platforms on the other side. These are generally for bigger events that we use. Uh, I know TEDx uses hop in. Axel events is used a lot by nonprofits and small businesses um, because this is a great, uh, Axel events is actually pretty affordable and they're very good to use. Uh, good tool for you where you can do multiple speakers at the same time you can do branding you can do sponsor booths and for networking uh, as well uh, we um, at aramba we do use obs and wirecast for helping us to live stream our uh, social uh, our uh, virtual events and OBS and Wirecast are two different softwares which helps you to actually brand your events and they are um, there's work OBS is free but it's got a very high learning curve and Wirecast is easier to use but it comes with a price so all these platforms kind of comes with a price especially if you're doing a bigger event you want to make sure that uh, when you do these events you are able to um, utilize it for the right uh, purpose. So uh, the different types that we have come across over the last year is, of course, webinar, virtual events, and virtual conferences. Uh, webinars are great. Um, you know, Zoom allows us to do it but, uh, very easily. Virtual events also you can be done via Excel events. And then virtual conferences, you can get an MC where you can actually donate brand and make it fun and interactive. So one of the challenges that I've noticed with virtual events, of course, is how do you make it more interactive? How do you make it more engaging with your audience? Uh, what are the things that you need to do to make it um, have people stay there for the entire period of time? That's, that's a big problem. So I'm going to show you, and I think that's where branding comes in. Your branding really needs, it's so important uh, when you are doing virtual events like this. Um, so let's look at the branding here. So this is something that if you look at the left hand side of the screen, uh, we did a virtual event for Black Mat Maternal Mental Health Virtual Summit, which was um, in February or March, we created that, but we created all the branding for them, their blue color, uh, blue lo logo, we kind of had made sure that, you know, we had the logo all throughout, we had their uh, tag we had their na name of the person and even when they were presenting we kind of created um, uh, their powerpoints kind of was embedded within the branding whereas if you are looking at a different so the reason why i'm doing this is if you are hiring a virtual event company you want to ask the right questions you want to make sure that you are getting But we are doing virtual event a lot of people don't know what you can get there's a lot you can get through this process and um, this was a six hour event that we had done and we had breaks and we had an MC in between we had uh, people come in and join um, giveaways and stuff like that so we created really high engagement all throughout the show because even though it was a six hour show what we really we had 50% engagement all throughout. And that's very high for a virtual event when it is six hours. Generally, 30% uh, is what um, stays throughout the show because people will come in and go out. Um, they are not going to stay for the entire show. So you have to make it as engaging with videos, with uh, polls, with uh, asking questions, giving them enough breaks. So a lot of things can be done. Um, and if you look at this, this is another event that we had done, which is uh, making sure that people can reach to your social media. So you can create all of, the, but these all need, again, a lot of prep work ahead of time. You can definitely do something like this on the right hand side where there is no branding and the person is really small and you just have a PowerPoint presentation. That's no fun, but you can do 
a lot more where your background can be changed. You have the you know name of your uh, show on the top. Then you have pictures come in and you can also have your social media handles all at the bottom of the screen. Um, so so we, we have a question actually from Susan. She's asking, um, is one platform better than any other for hacking or user friendly options? Hacking <laughs> and <laughs> user. So um, the, the one of the, pro I think hopefully the softwares will get better. We have done a lot of research over the last one year because of exactly the same question, Susan, is um, OBS allows you to do a lot of these things. Um, OBS is a great platform and it is free, but it has a very high learning curve. Um, it takes a long time to figure out things. How do you have, um, so one of the, so how we are talking in Zoom, if you have multiple people talk, how do you screen capture? How do you put the other person on the screen? And the bigger challenge is not just video, it's actually audio. How do you make sure you can hear the audio on the other person? So a lot of times we had figured out uh, face problems like your your video and audio will not sync. So so it, it's you have to really sit and work on that software for a very long period of time to figure out all the nuances that can come with it. And not only that, it is, um, so OBS would be my suggestion to go with it. There is another easier uh, software that you can use is called StreamYards. And StreamYard gives you some of the options, um, all these options, but also StreamYard does not allow a ton of video. We do a lot of video, so we use OBS and Wirecast. Mm. Does that answer your question, Susan, a little bit? It does help. Um, oftentimes I'm on, um, I'll, I say I use Zoom, professional uh, Zoom account, because I'm on confidential conversations. And um, when that happens, I'm always concerned about what is the potential for this to be hacked. I've never had it happen, but I've heard horror stories. And um, so I just wondered what your opinion was on that. Was one better than the other? As well. So, um, depending exactly depending what you're uh, what you're doing, Blue Jeans is a better option, security wise, um, definitely. And I've even, heard that. Yeah. Yeah. So Blue Jeans is definitely so their privacy settings are much more stronger than what we have on Zoom. And even if you look at um, let's look at uh, Axel events. If you're doing a bigger uh, sh uh, multiple speakers and multiple people and networking and um, and your security is your concern, you definitely want to use one of these um, uh, private networks like um, Axel Events and Hopin. And even um, Vimeo does it nowadays, but Vimeo is also expensive. Mm -hmm. Zoom, one of the things that I have uh, realized, what people love to you, you have to really look at what your audience wants at the end of the day and what they're most comfortable using. And that should be a driving factor um, when you are choosing one of these platforms. Uh, we did the 6R event and my suggestion was to go with Axel events to our client PSI, but they were like, no, my clients are in Austell, Georgia. They don't use that much of you know uh, software they do not want to learn something new again we are going to use zoom so we did all this in zoom but we actually had a virtual camera from obs that actually projected to zoom so you can do a lot of different things um, you can still use zoom and one of your other platforms but um, you still can get the branding but you really the driving factor should be what does your audience want at the end of the day do you want to make it easy for them or um difficult not exactly difficult but uh, is your audience okay to learn a new software mm. which which ties in very nice to how susan kind of kicked off this conversation around it's it is very important to think about the audience. You can't forget them and what's gonna be the best place for you to meet them and how you interact with them and how you make them feel. Like, and you've been giving some really good tips, Mo, as to how to keep the momentum and the engagement going, especially if you have a long, a long event. So that's really good. Thank you. Um, yeah, th um, thank you so much. It is just, 
it's amazing like the prep time though it takes for events like this people underestimate they're like okay yeah i have an event in two weeks can you guys do it no we cannot it, it is impossible uh to uh do an event with branding having your speakers and make everything run smooth because we it's still all running on wi-fi it's still all running on a lot of technology so you have to make sure that you have multiple rehearsals make sure everybody's computer works make sure they have um you know uh, what we did right in the beginning of this presentation that how they present themselves does their audio work video work so we do multiple of those rehearsals uh and if you're hiring again a, a producer to do this for you, please make sure you ask them for rehearsals because on the day off, you do not want to find uh, things that can go wrong and things go wrong all the time. It's, it has happened to our events. <laughs> and I think that would be great for some of our attendees to like some people with us live to share some of those horror stories and like get your question, like ask some advice as to how to handle that a bit differently. Um, Sylvia is asking a question and she's asking, what about other engagement tools like polls, Mentimeter, word clouds and rooms? So what would be your, your take on those tools, Mo? Yeah, I think the polls are great. Um, again, you want to add branding to your polls when you're asking them. So I think ahead of time, we're all so we do a very solid runoff show ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So we say, OK, we are going to have a sponsor uh, video right in the beginning. Who are our sponsors for the event? And we give them a nice little video for all our sponsors. Then we have um, a little sponsor uh, uh, sponsor um, videos, which are 30 seconds or longer where they come in and talk about their product and thank people on there. So you can use videos, Mentimeters, and those polls for engagement. They're excellent ways uh, for oh, lunches. Mentimeters. Sorry, Mo, because I'm, 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 I don't know what a Mentimeter is, so I'm learning something really new now. now. Can you share with us what that is that? Mentimeters is another website, so you can actually uh, plug in. I have used it a few times. Um, uh, we used it for learning about, you know, uh, what are, so it was a marketing call that we were on, and it was, what are your best ways to market? Um, what are your top three marketing um, in, in, I'm trying to think, hold on. So, what are the top three things that you use for marketing? Mm -hmm. And uh, people kind of came up with their, and they give you exam. So it's almost like a poll, but it is immediate and you can see it as and when it happens. So Mentimeter is great. Another great website that they have, and it's pretty new. I don't think it was there even, I used it only last year and this year. So I don't think it's that old. So any of these things will add a lot of engagement. I would definitely say videos. Uh, we also do lunches, like interactive lunches, virtual lunches. So we will send people like, hey, we'll make a sandwich together. Get, get, this is the, our chef has planned for this. So things like that. So you can, there's a lot that one can do on virtual events. Um, it's not restricted to just, okay, I'm just, it's going to be only this flows this way. We add music to it. We add uh, MC on it, um, who comes and introduces the breaks and the next person coming up next. So a um, lot of fun stuff can be done. So, but make sure none of this can be done without prepping. Mm -hmm. Do not do this without <laughs> planning and prepping for this. Uh, even a small webinar will take take us good two to three weeks uh, to set up for it, like an hour long webinar with videos and sponsors and pe uh, speakers coming in. Three weeks is minimum. And for a longer event, anywhere between uh, three two to three months is very, very common if you're doing registration. We had a, um, a PSI Georgia had 750 registrants on that. We took three months to actually prep for that entire event and had a really smooth selling uh, webinar. That's one of the first webinars, which was com there was no problems. But the horror stories and that you were talking about, um, and I'll share some of the horror stories that we had during a virtual event was one of them was uh, the internet was so work so it was more of an internet issue the wi-fi was so overworked because there were six people on the wi-fi do 
though we were hardwired, it still became a problem after a point of time where people's uh, visuals were not clearly visible. They were breaking up. Uh, so, and we had to shut down the, fr the program froze. What do you do when you have something like that? So you have to think through what you can do. So we had a backup slide saying, we will be there in a minute, hang in there, we are having technical difficulties. Um, then when it happened second time, we had a little video play of all, uh, with all pictures in there of the attendee um, of the organization. So people had something to watch and see while this was, while we were fixing in the background. So definitely prepare for all the problem areas that can happen when you are doing a virtual event. Because I it love it. Help. I love those tips. And I mean, building on that, Sylvia was saying um, she, she likes about um, Mentimeter. I just went, yeah, Mentimeter. She says, great, you ask questions and people answer on their phones and you see responses immediately. You just send them the link. So I do like that. And I haven't used it before. So thank you for that tip, Sylvia. I'm definitely going to try and use that moving forward. And I love as well, Marie was saying, that she had a client that did a virtual wine test tasting. Ooh, like that one. They arranged with the vineyard to send wine and cheese to guests beforehand. And it was a teeny budget, but got rave reviews. So it's, it's, it's about what, like what Susan was saying in the beginning, and Marie, it's like, what's the experience that you want to give your participants and your attendees what's the whole experience and i love what you were saying more about you know getting a chef to prepare a sandwich if you have a long thing and you a long uh, event what are the ways to break it up um and susan said that uh, she had a lunch delivered at the same time for a virtual lunch event so that was pretty cool so you're online and then suddenly everybody's getting their their lunch delivered that was nice um that was cool and Sylvia said, ha, I did a flower arrangement course online with fresh flowers sent home, you see, so it's really cool. Mm -hmm. So how can we bring, bring those things in? And I think the other point to what, what I think uh, Sylvia was saying earlier was around groups, breakout groups, they can be a really good way to break up the flow and to get people to network. I think the only thing with breakout groups is you need to tell people how long they're going to have in advance because Five minutes is never enough. I hate it. I don't know about you guys. Five minutes, you don't even get to me, especially even if you've got five people in that group. I don't know. What's your experience, guys, with the breakouts? Too short. Five is too short, but that's a typical number. Yeah. But that's yeah. always, you know, it leaves you wanting more. I don't know if that's good or bad. Mom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So breakout rooms, I I don't like I don't like breakout rooms on Zoom. The only reason I cannot brand it as much uh, as if you have a huge uh, like six hundred different people registrants doing their breakout rooms that time is not conducive. Mm -hmm. You can actually do with the smaller groups. That's actually um, breakout rooms are great for smaller groups, but I think for a bigger. Uh, bigger audience, it's kind of hard to do, but you can do it on one of those other uh, virtual platforms that I talked about, which is um, which is Axel events and hop in where you can choose where you want to go. They give you an experience of like, okay, I want to not go to this room, but I want to go to that room and it, you can do that. But I don't think Zoom has the capability yet until and unless the host does it ahead of time. Uh, I think we need to choose up of either we let them go into anyone or we put them into specific rooms. And Sylvia is saying that she also has mixed feelings about rooms, who coordinates them and half the people are lost. To your point, it's like, which room do you go to? Although one tip I would say, I have seen, I was part of an online training given by an accelerator a few weeks ago. And what they did was they made sure they, they pre-assigned moderators in each of those breakout rooms in advance. And so each of us, I was one of the moderators, for example, and they gave us a virtual screen. So it was orange in their branding. So they could clearly see in the breakout room who was the moderator. So I think that's a workaround, uh, Mo, for, for people who want to use, like, especially what you're saying with branding, there is that workaround. So you could make sure that whoever's a moderator will just have your branded um, virtual screen. Yeah, I agree. Murray, you had a point, yeah? Oh, I was just, I was going to say the other um, benefit I see in having a designated moderator is that you ensure that there's a flow to the conversation because sometimes when you um, do the breakout room and no one knows anyone, 
that five minutes can seem really long. long. <laughs> yes, really does. Okay, so I want us to move along. Yeah. We're, we're slightly over on time already. Is everybody still good to stay on for a couple more minutes as, as Mo wraps up and we grab any more questions? Just want to make sure that that's okay for those of you who want to stay with us. Just type yes in the chat box so we know we got you with us. That'd be great. Excellent. See, <laughs> Sylvia, I love it. Go for it, Mo. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's just a few more things. If you are sharing this, uh, the, I'm not going to open these up. They have all links to the webcam, lights, and audio that I was talking about. Um, it's not a huge investment, maybe $300 in total, $350 in total, but I think it's it's going to create a huge impact in your business and i think it's a great investment to have because you'll appear very confident successful and look amazing on camera um some of the quick tips that i want to give you guys is if you have a zoom bag if your space is cluttered quickly switch on the zoom background because there's a lot of audio and videos there's an audio video settings where you can find this uh, one of the problems that I have had with zoom backgrounds is it does take much more of your Wi Fi uh, bandwidth, so it can be a problem and also they are getting better with the zoom background like Susan's looks really nice, but if you move around a whole lot it you know it takes things off of your head or you know so that's been only my um i don't like that personally because it's visually little uh throws me off a little bit but that's my only pet peeve um with zoom background uh wired connection is what you want to do if you are on a very uh, important meeting get off the wi-fi get onto a hardwired inter uh, ethernet cable and it will make your life so much easier and even your audience's experience um if for, especially for virtual events if you're hiring that company make sure that they go and test the connection there it's absolutely uh a, like there's no way around it because they are going to have issues if they don't do that um, and look into the camera and make sure that you're talking directly to the camera. So those are a few things I would highly um, recommend um, that you do when you are on a Zoom meeting. And I think that's it from me. I'm going to wrap up with that thought because it's just we are not going to go away if we embrace this technology and uh, let's do better. I love it. And thank you so much, Mo, for sharing your professional tips and, and insights with us. And doing it live, I think that's really cool that we could actually see the see what you were doing live. Marie, Susan, would you like to add anything while I invite our attendees to please do feel free to add your questions to us all here because we have a couple coming through. Yeah. Marie. I just wanted to add one thing. Um, in the chat, I placed um, a link to my dear friend who is an author and was one of the first women sportscasters, uh, as well as a, a woman referee. So um, when we talk about being presentable, uh, things have changed. Things are all over the board, male, female. It's not a gender thing that we're trying to present. But these are key elements that um, I think are important. I just wanted to address that because uh, she does a much better job of talking about her experience in early TV when women were not really um, um, appreciated for their skill. So it is about skill, but these are key things that are for everybody. I just want to put that out there. I love it. Thank you. So if, if I want to invite any last questions from anybody, Marie, would you like to add anything? No, I think a huge thank you to Mo for her taking the time and to the audience for joining us. And um, I echo Susan that I know a lot of times we, um, as feminists, we push back a little bit about the whole, I have to wear makeup and, and all that. Um, and in, particularly in my world, dealing with clinicians who it's like my brain that they're hiring as opposed to to my looks that at the end of the day, psychology still says that there are tiny little things that matter. So finding a way to, to balance your individuality with what your audience is, ex is expecting um, yeah. is key. Yeah. Yes, I, I really like that. And I think the, the other thing is to, um, you know, stay true to yourself. So yes, be careful. Like I love the example you gave earlier where there was uh, somebody who was doing the, the, the webinar from their bed or had an, I had heard other horror stories of, you know, 
professional professors or other people who are doing TV interviews or other uh, webinars, live webinars, and you see an unmade bed behind them. And it's like, really, couldn't you have made the bed? <laughs> or just put a virtual background. Um, you know, we really don't need to see your bed. <laughs> I know you're stuck in quarantine in your hotel and you can at least maybe position the camera differently, you know? So that's excellent. So I want us to, to wrap, on this, wrap up and say thank you so much to all of our speakers. Thank you so much, Mo, for all of your professional guidance and tips. Also uh, to Marie and Susan for your insights and tips as well. Uh, Gabriella is saying great speakers, wonderful tips, truly enjoyable when a, a webinar. Thanks for organizing. Thanks, Gabriella, for your feedback. It's always wonderful. So for those of you who are watching this as a replay on YouTube, check, you will catch a link in the description below to be able to download the slides. I know that Moha will have access to information about her business if you'd like to learn more about her services and how she could be of help of service to you and your small business or bigger business. You'll be able to find out there as well as um, all the social um, media links to all of our speakers, because you've heard from Marie and Susan, as I said, they were just wearing one hat today. They have many. And I thank you both so much for sharing your wisdom with us. So thank you all. You will catch the, um, catch the downloads in the link below on YouTube. And for those of you who are coming other way, you will also get a link to download. So thank you all for being with us. And thank you so much. You and thank again. you, Marie. And thank you, Susan, and all of you who attended. This is, was amazing experience. I loved thank it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mo. It's wonderful. Take care, everybody.